Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2018 Ford Explorer, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms. So there's gonna be a total of five main components needed to flat tow your Explorer down the road. The first one's going to be your base plate. And that base plate is going to provide us with a solid and reliable connection point. That way we can hook up our tow bar to it. The tow bar is going to be that second component. This is actually going to be the physical link that connects the front of your Explorer to the back of your motorhome. The third component that you're going to need is safety cables. Now the safety cables are there in the event of an unlikely disconnect. These are going to keep your Explorer connected to your motorhome. The fourth main component that you're going to need is tow bar wiring. So the wiring is going to transfer the lighting functions from the back of your motorhome to the back of your Explorer keeping you not only safe, but legal as well. And last but not least, you're going to need a braking system. Uh, braking system, what it's gonna do is apply the brakes in your Explorer whenever you hit the brakes in your motorhome. That's going to help bring you to a safe and predictable stop. Now there is a sixth component that isn't absolutely necessary, but does make life a lot easier whenever you're flat towing. Since the Explorer does require you to disconnect the battery whenever you flat tow, that can be a real hassle and you can avoid that by picking up a automatic battery disconnect switch. That's going to allow you to disconnect and reconnect your battery simply by just pushing a button. So this is what the base plate is going to look like once it's installed on the front of your Explorer. Now I will say I am relatively impressed on the appearance. It does do a pretty good job of blending in. It does require minimum cutting, so you're still able to maintain your grill and really help keep that factory appearance. Nothing really sticks out too far and is super noticeable. I do like too how everything is kind of spaced out evenly and once we're hooked up, that's gonna give us a really clean and organized look. So one thing I do really like about this base plate is the fact that it already has brackets on it and that's to mount up other flat tow components such as your breakaway switch and your wiring connector. So that's not something you see with every base plate. Some of the other ones require you to use different brackets and trying to do that, finding a location to mount your components can be a bit tricky, but this base plate figured that out for you and it puts them in a real nice spot here which are easy to get to. It does have a black powder coat finish which not only looks good, but is really gonna help keep it in good shape for years to come. And to kind of go a step further, whenever you're not using the base plate, they do give you these plugs here, which not only help clean up the look of it, but also protect your base plate from dirt and debris entering inside and beating it up. But whenever you are ready to use a base plate, you're going to take your removable arms and install them. And that's one of the really nice things about this. It's super easy to hook up. So the way the arms work, very, very simple. You just slide them in and rotate them about a quarter of a turn until that pin locks into place. It's gonna be the same setup here on the other side as well. And whenever you're ready to actually hook up to your motorhome, it's going to be extremely easy as well. Once you have your other components hooked up to get the tow bar in place, you're simply just going to line the lugs up with your removable arms and just push that pin in. So today we have the Blue Ox Ascent tow bar, extremely easy and straightforward. Just take your little pin there, run that in, lock it down and these safety chain openings very easy to get to as well now the base plate is going to work with many different blue ox tow bars it'll pair up perfectly however it can work with other brand tow bars as well and that's because here at e-trailer we do offer adapters which will allow a different brand tow bar to pair up with the blue ox base plate and this is what it's going to look like once everything is hooked up. As you can see, it looks really clean and organized. 
and really easy to get to. So that really does make life really easy when you hook up or disconnect. And since everything is nice and tidy, it's going to make it really easy just to take a quick glance at the front of your Explorer and make sure everything is hooked up properly. Now, one thing I do think is worth mentioning is a high-low adapter, which is this piece here. You may need one, you may not. It kind of just depends more or less on your motorhome setup. And the purpose of it is to get your tow bar nice and level like we have it here today. Now, to find that out, you're going to need to measure from the center of your pinhole here on your base plate. In our case, our Explorer is 15 inches. That measurement could vary slightly depending on your tire size and model of Explorer, but that should at least get you in the ballpark. But what you do is measure that and then measure the center of your hitch pin hole on your motorhome. And what you want is that measurement to be within three inches of each other. That way your tow bar will ride nice and flat and it'll track well and be the way it should. Now, as far as the installation goes, it is relatively involved, but that's usually the case with base plates, so nothing really too crazy there. I will say probably the most difficult part is removing the fascia, but once that's out of the way, you're going to have a ton of room to work, and as long as you stay patient, you shouldn't have any issues getting it done. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our install, we're going to be here at the front of our Explorer, and we're going to need to remove this plastic radiator cover. So you go ahead and pop the hood, and first thing is we're going to have two plastic pushpin style fasteners just like this. So one here and one on the other side. Get those out, you can just take a trim tool or a flathead screwdriver, kind of pry underneath the head of it, and you're able to work the whole thing out. Do that over here for this one as well. And then we, we're going to have a total of seven screws along this edge of the cover. So I'll use a 10 millimeter socket to pull this out. So there will be three on the driver's side and four over here on the passenger side. Once we have all those removed though, we should be able to pull this up and set it to the side. Now what we can do is move to our front wheel wells. Now we're gonna have a total of seven fasteners here along this front edge, four, five, six, and seven. We're gonna pull all those out using a five and a half millimeter socket. And I want to mention from this point on, anything we do to this side of our Explorer, we're going to do to the other side as well because it'll be set up the same way. And then if we look kind of in the center of our wheel well here along this edge, we're going to have a plastic fastener. We're going to pull that out as well. It has a Phillips head bit in it, so you can just do this very lightly by hand. You kind of start backing that out. And once you have it pretty much all the way loose, you should be able to kind of grab it, pull it out, as well as the base. So now if you kind of take your wheel well liner and push it back out of the way, and if you look right here in this area where our fascia meets the quarter panel, right there along this edge, we're going to have three 10 millimeter bolts that we need to take out. So a little tricky to see, but relatively easy to feel. So they're not too bad. Now we can loosen up this little wheel well trim piece. There's no bolts or anything holding this in. You kind of just grab the bottom and kind of pry out. And we don't need to take it all the way off. We just want to get it up high enough to where it's free from our front fascia here. So right here in this area is just fine. Now if you move underneath our Explorer here, just under the front 
Fascia, we're gonna have some hardware we need to take out. We have three bolts here in the corner. That's an eight millimeter socket to get those removed. And one right here. Then we're gonna have three in the center. And on the other corner here, it's gonna be set up the same as the other side. So we'll just get those pulled out too. At this point, we can actually remove our fascia. So I do suggest getting a friend to help you on the other side. But all we're gonna to have to do is kind of pull down at the corner and start to pull out. Now, don't take it off too fast. You may have some connectors in our case, on the driver's side here, we have an electrical connector right there. I'm going to disconnect that by pushing down on the center tab and pulling out. And over here on the passenger side, we're going to have a washer fluid hose. Now, since we're taking this off anyway, what I'm going to do is just cut the line. I'll shorten it up a hair. And then what you can do is actually take one of the bolts that we removed from the fascia, just kind of plug it into the end of that line to help stop it from leaking. With that being said, we can grab our fascia and set it off to the side somewhere safe. Now we can get our washer fluid reservoir removed. So we'll start by disconnecting the wires that go to it. Push down on that center tab and lift up. Have one right there as well. we'll. Remove that, and we can remove our lines. So this one right here, what you're able to do, this little black clip. If you just kind of snap that off, you're able to pull it off. And what I did was just take a little piece of hose and put a screw in it and we should be able to work that over it to stop it from leaking. We're gonna have one more line over here. Do the same thing. Just pull that out. And I can grab another screw. Kinda come up here and just disconnect the lines from it. I'll set them to the side and what we'll have to do now is remove this wiring harness from the actual washer fluid tank get that wiring off we're just going to take a trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver and just pry underneath the fastener there and kind of just push this wiring out of the way and now we're actually able to remove our washer tank. So it's gonna be held in place by three bolts. This one here, we're gonna use an eight millimeter socket. Pull that out. We're gonna have this one right here, which we'll use an 11 millimeter. And we're gonna have one pretty much identical to that one we just removed down here in this corner, right there. So once we have all those pulled off, we can grab our reservoir, and pull it towards you. We kind of just work its way down. We have it out, set it off to the side. Over here on the driver's side, we're gonna have some wiring that's kind of runs along our frame rail that could potentially get in the way of our base plate. So again, I'm just gonna take a trim tool and pop those fasteners free. That way, if we need to, we can kind of take our wiring and fold it out of the way. 
Now, depending on the model of Explorer you have, you may have to do a little bit of trimming, particularly for those of you that have the active shutters. In our case, our Explorer does not have that, so we don't have to worry about that trimming. But if that's your situation, you can see the diagrams and your instructions and get everything trimmed out. Now, with the next set of hands, we can grab our base plate and put it into position. So it's just going to come along here on the side of the frame rail. And for now, we're just going to kind of clamp it in place to hold it secure. So I'll just get it re relatively close where it needs to be. And tighten that clamp down. You're going to want to do this on each side. That way the base plate will support itself and we can get it perfectly lined up and start to secure it. So now what we can do is grab these little brackets and these are going to be side specific so refer to your instructions. One quick way is the slant here should face towards the inside of the vehicle. So for example we're over here on the driver's side and these holes are going to line up, or I'm sorry, one of the holes is going to line up with one of the holes here in our K member. On the driver's side, we're going to be using this hole right here and that one. On the passenger side, you're going to use the outside hole, so this one. That's the only difference between the two. But that's going to line up. Then what you're going to do is take a hex bolt, split lock washer, and a flat washer. And we're also going to want to take some red Loctite and put it on the threads. So all of the hardware that we're going to use to hold the base plate on is going to receive this red Loctite. You can pick some up right here at e-trailer. Line that up. I'm going to push the bolt through. And then what we're going to do is grab one of these handle nuts. All right, and you're going to put like a 90 degree bend in it right there at the end. And how it's going to work is this is going to go through this opening, this larger opening here in our K member. And you can kind of see you're going to push it flat to get those threads to line up. We'll take our bracket and our bolt and get that started. And we're just going to get it hand tight for now. On the outside of our base plate, we're going to have two holes down here at the bottom. You're going to take a hex bolt, split lock washer, don't forget your Loctite. You're just going to push those through. Same thing for this one. On the other side where our bolts come through, we're going to take a flat washer, slide that over it, and a nylon lock nut. We'll get these hand tight. We're going to get this done on the other side of our Explorer as well. Now what we need to do is trim up our bumper beam a little bit. So if we look right here, there's an opening already there. And that's what we're gonna use to get our hardware inside of the frame rail. However, there's a small issue. The large handle nut is too big to fit through there. So we're going to enlarge that a little bit, just enough to get that nut through there. This is pretty thick metal, so I'm gonna use a Dremel tool, use a cutoff wheel or something like that. So here's what that opening's gonna look like once it's cut out. You can see it's just big enough to get that handle nut in there. Now what we're gonna do is you're gonna wanna bend this similar to this, and there's actually a hole on the frame rail on the bottom side. I'm going to take this nut, set it in there, and you just want to get it close to lining up with that hole on the bottom side. So if you look right here, there's a hole on our base plate, and underneath that there's a hole in the frame rail, and that's where we need to line our handle nut up with. So I'm holding that handle nut in place. We're going to take the large bolt and a large split lock washer. Don't forget your Loctite. And we're going to push that up through there and get it started. Sometimes you gotta kinda hold that handle nut steady to keep it all lined up. Once you get it going, 
We're just gonna leave it hand tight for now. Now that we have both of the large bolts in place and hand tight, we can use a inch and one eighth socket to snug them down. Then what we can do is come back to the hardware that's holding on the bracket and snug those down as well. Now we can come down to the hardware that's holding on the bracket and snug all those down as well. Now we can use a torque wrench to tighten down the hardware in that same order as we snugged it. And you can find that torque specification in your instructions. Now if you look here on the side of our base plate towards the top, we're gonna to have two holes and we're gonna use those holes as guides to drill a hole into our frame rail. So I'm gonna use a 3 8 drill bit and work through the frame rail for each one of these. Now that we have those holes drilled, what we're gonna do is take our handle nuts and line them up with the holes. So once you have them lined up, you're gonna take a hex bolt and a split lock washer in your Loctite. Sneak that in there. Kind of hold it in place. And get your bolt started. I like to start with this one here since it is further back, it's a little trickier and not having an additional handle nut in the way makes it a little easier sometimes. And you'll go ahead and use that same hardware combination for this attachment point here. Once those are both in and hand tight, you can come in and snug them down. And once they're snugged up, We'll take our torque wrench and tighten them down to the amount specified in our instructions. Now that everything's all torqued down, what I'm gonna do is come back in with just a pair of snips and trim up some of that extra wire from the handle nut there. And we'll just clean up our install look. And since we did end up cutting this metal here, we don't wanna leave that bare metal exposed. So to help prevent rust, I'm just gonna take a little spray paint and put a coating on it. So I went ahead and installed our safety cables, which is this here. So what you do is just grab the cable, wrap it around your frame. There's a hole here in the bottom of your base plate where you can take the included D-link and just wrap that D-link around the end of them cables and through that opening. So now we can reinstall our washer fluid reservoir. So what we're gonna do Basically, it's going to come with a bunch of these washers. You're going to take nine of them, and I just taped them together. Just slide it over those studs. And sneak this back in there. And get it re-secured. Now, we're not going to be reinstalling this bolt, so this is just going to be held back in place by our two nuts. Get them started, we can come back down and snug them up. Once it's secure, we can 
reinstall the lines. We'll pull our cap off. That one just pushes back in place and we'll put our little keeper back in there. This one just gets plugged in. And we'll leave this one plugged for now since our front fascia actually had a tube that came off it that connected to this end. So we'll just leave that plugged for the time being. We'll get that plugged in once we reinstall our fascia. From there though, we can simply plug our electronics back in. Make sure you get the right connector. And then we can just re-secure that harness by pushing those fasteners back into place. Now what we can do is move to our fascia and trim out some of the grill, that way our base plate and other components can pass through it. So what I did is just kind of held this in place on the front of our car and kind of eyeballed where we need to cut and I just made a few marks here for our base plate. We're gonna cut out this area for our wiring and over here for our base plate as well. So I'm just gonna use a pair of snips like this. It's relatively thin plastic, so it should cut right through it. Get all these openings cut out. And once I have them cut out, then we can kind of hold our fascia to the front of the car and make sure we don't need to do any more trimming or come back and cut a little more out. My thought is when you're doing the trimming, you can always take more material out. You can't add it. So sometimes it's easier to cut it short and come back and take a little more out if you need to. Now if we flip our fascia over and look in our instructions, they actually tell us that this little plastic tab right here needs to be trimmed flush. So I'm just going to take my snips and just trim that piece off on each side. Now with an extra set of hands, we can reinstall our fascia. We can line everything up. Make sure our base plate passes through. And we'll just get everything resecured the opposite way that we removed it. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms on our 2018 Ford Explorer.